Today's game is a super simple car game. You can spin, you can drive, you can crash into the walls, and you can even stop. Get ready to make this super simple game. Okay, lesson one, creating a new project. First, we go to new, new blank, and we enter the project name. And this project will be called the car game. Let's go. Lesson two, creating sprites. A sprite is basically an image or a picture. To create a sprite, we go to sprites, right click, create, and left click on sprite. The first creating is SPR for sprite underscore player. Go to edit image. Now we can zoom in and out by holding down control and using the middle mouse wheel. We can also toggle on the grid over here to make it easier to draw things. Today we are going to be using the rectangle tool. This is the rectangle outline and this is the rectangle fill. We'll be using the rectangle fill. I'm going to choose red and draw a body of a vehicle. Next we'll be choosing blue and drawing a window. Uh, something like this should be good. And then we'll choose red again to make the roof of the vehicle. Something like that seems pretty good. Choose the line tool and we are going to draw a line from the body to the roof or rather from the roof to the body. Just like that. We have completed the vehicle but we also want to smoothen it out a bit so we're going to choose the eraser tool, erase, and we are going to make the front of the vehicle a little bit sharper on this side too. And the back a little bit rounder. And there we've done it. Next, double click on SPR player. Now we need to find the turning point of the vehicle, uh, where it will rotate from. We can either grab this and move it to the middle of the vehicle, or we can go to the top right, click and choose middle center. Next, we're going to find the touching point of the vehicle, the collision mask. Where can the vehicle be touched? So go to collision mask. First, we've got rectangle. Unfortunately, this is not a perfect rectangle. As you can see, the vehicle can even be touched here, even though there is nothing there. So we can go to the arrow over here, go to precise per frame, and it'll cut out the image perfectly. Okay, we have one more sprite to create. So go to sprites, right click, create, sprite. This sprite is going to be called SPR for sprite underscore wall. Go to edit image. Once again, by holding down control, you can zoom in and out by also using the middle mouse wheel. The grid's already toggled on. We don't need it this time. We are going to be using the fill tool and we are going to use a light gray. And voila, we have got our wall. Double click on SPR wall, find the middle center and find the touching point, the collision mask. This one rectangle is perfect. Lesson three, creating objects. For this game, we only need two objects. To create an object, we go to the right side, right click on objects, create, left click on object. The first object is gonna be called obj for object underscore player. Then as you can see over here, we do not have a picture yet. So we go to these three dots, click on it, click on sprites and choose the player picture. One object complete. Let's make one more object, go to right side, Right click on objects, create, and left click on object. The second object is going to be called obj for object underscore wall. And once again, we have to assign a sprite. Go to the three dots, choose sprites, and choose the wall. We have now completed our two objects. Lesson four, rooms and running your game. To open up your first room, go to the right side of the screen, click on the arrow by rooms and double click on room one. Now the first room is already made. If you take a look at the bottom left of the screen, you can see the size of the room. Its width is currently 1,366 and its height is 768. We will not change this in today's lesson. And once again, to zoom in or zoom out, you can hold down control and use the middle mouse wheel. If you try to drag the sprite in, you'll see there'll be a type of error. You need to drag in the object. So go to objects, push the left mouse button down and drag the OBJ player into the room. We can run the game now by hitting the run button at the top left of the screen. But unfortunately, even after it loads up, nothing will happen. The game will run, but we cannot play it as of yet. Lesson five, variables. To add our first variable, we are going to go to OBJ player and go to add event, create. Now we can add code into here, but what we are going to be doing is creating our own variables, which we'll be using in the code after this. Let's first extend this. 
and make a new line. So the first variable we are going to be creating is our own speed variable. We are going to be calling this SPD and we're going to make it equal zero. Also, whenever we end code, we use a semicolon. This is to show that the code is actually completed. It is finished. So what will SPD do? Basically, whenever we use SPD in our code, it will represent zero. Variables can also be something like HP equals 10. Our hit points, our health points will equal 10. Or perhaps gold equals 1000. This is where we create our own words for things we'll be using in the game. Let's get rid of the gold and let's get rid of the HP. So we have our own speed and it equals zero. Lesson six, add in code. To do this, we go to add event, step, step, make a new line. The first code we're going to be adding is speed. We're going to make speed equal, well, whatever speed we want the vehicle to go. For example, if we put four, close the code, let's test that out. The vehicle is going at speed four. Of course, we can make this faster. We could say 10, hit play, and now the vehicle's going at speed 10. Or we could even make it go at 100,000. We cannot see the vehicle because it's going too fast. But we want speed to equal SPD. SPD, if you remember, equals zero, so therefore the vehicle will move at speed zero. That's what we want for now. Next, we want to make sure that the image of the vehicle is facing the same way it is moving. So we're going to put image angle equals direction. Close the code. So whichever way the vehicle is moving, that is the way the image is going to face. And finally, we want to make it that we can actually move the vehicle. We can turn it around. To do this, we're going to do the if code. If open close brackets keyboard underscore check. So check the keyboard, open close brackets, VK virtual key right. So this means check the keyboard. And if you are pressing the right key, do the following. We're going to say direction equals direction minus five. Let's just make sure that this all fits in nicely. There we go. That's pretty good. So check the keyboard. If you are pressing the right key, then direction should remain the same direction and minus five from that. Minus five degrees, minus five degrees. Direction equals direction and then minus five degrees. Stays the same direction, minus is five. If we said direction equals minus five, when we press right, that is minus five degrees. Every time we press right, it will face minus five degrees. We do not want that. What we want is the direction to stay in the same direction and then minus five from wherever we are. Okay, let's go to the next part. If, open close brackets, keyboard, underscore, check, check the keyboard, open close brackets, VK underscore left. So if we press the left key, what do we want to happen? Direction equals direction plus five. So we can go in the opposite direction. Let's take a look. So now we can move in both directions, either direction equals direction minus five or direction equals direction plus five. The vehicle is currently not able to move because speed equals zero. So what we're going to do is if open close brackets, keyboard underscore check, open close brackets, VK underscore up. If we press the up key, we want the vehicle to start moving. To do this, we're going to say SPD equals six. So now when we press the up key, SPD will equal six. Therefore, speed will equal six. Let's test that out. Press up and we are moving at speed six. The problem over here is we cannot stop. So in order to make the vehicle stop, hopefully you can have guessed this already. I'm going to say if open close brackets, keyboard underscore check, open close brackets, VK underscore down. So we're going to make it that if you press the down key, SPD will equal zero. Let's test that out. Press up, we move at speed six and press down, we will stop the vehicle. And we've completed the code for OBJ player. Lesson seven, add in solid objects. So first of all, we are going to go to room one and we're going to add our walls. Over here on the right side, we can drag the wall in and we can actually drag many in if we want to. 
However, we've got a much quicker way to do this. If we click on the wall, move down a little bit, you'll see an arrow and you can drag the wall out and make it longer. You can do this again over here, click on the wall, get the arrow and drag it across the room. Pull in another wall over here and maybe another wall over here. Click on the wall, get the arrow, drag it across the room. And the last one, click on the wall, get the arrow, drag it across the room. And you'd probably think, ah, oh, we have done it, it's complete. But if we hit the play button, let's see what happens. Press up to move, but we can go right through the wall. Or maybe it looks more like we're going under the wall. How will we fix this? Well, it's pretty simple. Go to OBJ wall, double click, and we are going to make it a solid. Now that's not all we have to do, hit the run button, you'll see that we can still go under the wall. So even though it's a solid, we have to say, what is it a solid for? To do this, we just go to add event, collision, objects, OBJ player. So now we know that it's a solid for OBJ player. And that's all we have to do. If we hit the play button, you'll see now that we cannot go through the wall. It's now a complete solid, it will block us. So the very last part we are going to do is go to room one and add another wall Let's move the vehicle to a different spot. And then we'll just drag this out, something like this, maybe move it down a bit. And we have created our first stage. You can hit the play button and play around with your little game, or maybe design a more difficult stage, a more easy stage, whatever you want to do. And as you can see, we cannot go through the wall. Congratulations on completing your very first game in Game Maker Studio. This was a very simple game and we're gonna do more advanced stuff in the future. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, and thumbs up. See you next time.